Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Real, and I am an artist. I'm a teacher. I am a multimedia artist and I do all sorts of things. And today we're going to explore collage, but it's a little different because it's fabric collage. Um, and we're going to actually make a piece. This video is part of the Acadiana Center for the Arts online series, Virtual Art Studio, where teaching artists present lessons in visual art, dance, music, and more that you can enjoy from anywhere. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself first, my journey as an artist and an art educator. Um, I love to draw, I love to paint, I make glass beads, I do a little of everything, and because I'm an educator in the arts, you kind of have to be well versed in everything. I like to incorporate all that I know in all that I do. So bringing us to fabric collage today, um, the way I like to think about fabric collage is just, just a different medium from regular collage. And you've probably collaged before where you take different scraps of paper and you build up different surfaces or you bring your idea to fruition through a, a visual application of parts and these parts usually being paper. Well, this time we're gonna be doing some fabric collage like this. And in here, I still do all the same things that I would do with paper. I take pieces, I lay them on, I reposition them, I take them off, I try something new. Um, I make these little wall panels and it's all done like this. I sometimes layer with um, smaller pieces to help hold on the larger pieces. They kind of act as band-aids, sort of. It's the same kind of feeling anyway. I use some glue to help me in my process of um, application. And there's lots of times when you will, you can work pretty large. This one is not my largest. I do have a piece behind me that's a bit larger and I have some other pieces that are larger still. But when you allow the fabric to do its thing, like in this case, I used the selvage, which is the edge of fabric. And so because it is on the edge, it has a certain ability to bend or stretch differently than the regular weave of the fabric. So that was fun to use. And I was able to make an arc or a curve. So the, the idea of fabric collage really was sparked by my desire to use up my scraps because I was playing with sewing. I say playing with sewing because I'm not a seamstress, but I am a creator with fabric. So I guess you could say I was a sewist. Um, I don't make clothing that I love to make art with fabric. And so in my, in my concern for throwing away lots of little pieces of fabric, I decided I should play with my fabric in a different way. So that's what I started doing. So I'm gonna bring you through how we do this and I will give you a little bit of introduction about your elements of art. You're gonna to need to think about a focal point or an area of emphasis. A lot of repetition is important because repetition makes your artwork stronger. There's a supply list too that you'll see and a lot of things are going to be different per person. What you find, you know, the scraps that you are able to find, what you use as a base, I do think you need to have a good pair of scissors. Most of us have paper cutting scissors, but not always are those going to be sharp enough for your fabrics. You'll also need some good glue. I particularly like this tacky glue because it's really on the dry side, and these are my really good scissors. Um, when I say on the dry side, I just mean it's tacky. It's a thicker white glue, but if you can't have this or you don't have this, Plain old white Elmer's glue is fine. You're not really gonna be washing these pieces, so it won't come out. Okay, you're gonna need lots and lots and lots of scraps. Um, and of course, we'll go into that in the video a little bit more about where you can find them, but you just need to start seeing things differently. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna have to find is something to use as a base. It's good to build up on a base. I'm not saying that you couldn't just start laying strips down, but you'd have a really hard time moving them. So you find something. This happens to be a pair of pants, a pair of jeans 
that um, I took the hem out at the top and then I have all these little raw edges and it can be, nobody said your artwork has to be square or rectangular by the way, but this also could be trimmed at a later time. So having a base, this happens to be the base I'm choosing today. And then I start going through my scraps. I have lots of strips. I've got um, tons of pieces. Some are big, some are small, some really need ironing. And iron is a handy thing to have, by the way. It would be great if I ironed all these things first. Um, keeps them all laying down nicely. But you can start anywhere. So um, composition is something that happens on its own, sort of but you have to wrangle it in every now and then. You don't really necessarily know what to want until you start putting some things on here. So I'm gonna have to create what I call an area of emphasis or a focal point. And sometimes you'll need to trim things. And there's different compositions that you can, if you know anything about art, it's gonna be things that you might recognize but have never stated out loud. This would be like a T composition. You can do all sorts of things though. The rules in art are wonderful and terrible because they're really, you can do everything wrong and still have a successful piece. So don't let uh, not knowing any rules be something that stops you. This is supposed to be fun and that's what, <laughs> that's what I think about it as. I like to think of it as playing with fabric. So you can also think about, you know, like would this look better layered underneath the red? Would it look better layered underneath the black? You know, so I am thinking the whole time that I am creating. Another thing that I seem to do a lot, and I think it's good for composition, is repetition. Repetition is, is something that you are going to, um, is gonna be super helpful for you. So by splitting this yellow just now with another color that is similar to red, I have made the yellow look like it shows up twice. Although I could, of course, incorporate more yellow. Now I have a lot of strips. Strips seem to be the kind of shape that I end up having the most of because when I'm trimming stuff, it leaves me with a lot of pieces that are strips. But it's not the only things I have. Sometimes I'm cutting out something and I end up with a curve. Now curves are special. Curves are gentle. And when you have a curve, you have something that's different than what else, you know, what else is going on. So that way you have contrast. And you can fold things, you can angle things, you can put things on. I could move this to hide that intersection if I wanted to. So having all of the red and the burgundy right now, I seem to have created a frame. Now, I may think that that's desirable. That might be kind of neat. I can focus on something. I could That could be like my area of emphasis. And I could think about, you know, putting something else in here, laying something in, and then somehow connecting it to what I already have. So that might be a good way to do that, but you have to be thinking all the time, like, does this show up? Now it doesn't really show up very well because it's on this blue. So then I have to think about what would make that pop more, especially if I'm trying to bring attention to it. And my curve no longer seems to be super important either, so maybe it gets a new position. And I have to, in doing this, you're constantly, you know, testing things out. I don't think the curve's gonna work there either. And that's the thing that you have to, you have to know that it's okay to change your mind and know that it's okay to, you know, completely scrap the whole thing and start fresh. There's not, you know, there's no collage police that are gonna come for you if you change your mind. When I'm talking to my students about all of this, I try to en encourage them, they're high schoolers, I try to encourage them to not worry so much about how it's looking as they're going. Because what's happening is it's still just a test. You're not really sure about what you're going to keep or what you're going to get rid of. 
And that's when I like to incorporate their phones or my phone. I like to take a picture of it because when you can see it small, then it's it's the equivalent of backing off. And backing off from your artwork is really important to do. So I'm gonna take a picture right now and then, and then I can see if I'm liking what's going on. See, I can already tell that this is definitely blending in too much into the background and it's not becoming a focal point. So right away, that gives me feedback and feedback is really important if you wanna keep going forward. So I need to find a way that I can, if I really want to keep that, and I kind of do, I think it's neat. It's just blue on blue is not really working. So I am going to see if I can do something that will bring more attention to it. And I really like this weird dot. So this now helps to sort of give this place an edge. And this edge is now more important. This dot is important. And using this black and black and white again, and black, there's a repetition of color, so you've got that going for you. And then I gotta see, like, does this, is this something I think is important? Do I want it to really show? If I do, I can kind of finger press it so that it'll stay folded there. And you can decide that that might be a method for you, that you want to have a bunch of these little angles that you create too. That could be something that becomes purposeful. I do kind of like to stick with a color scheme or a color way, however you want to think of it. So I have things in here that are sort of red-orange, but I also have things in here that are sort of burgundy and I've got blues and blacks. So I'm kind of setting that up right now. And when you are in the middle of, of play like this, you it's very low risk. I mean, you can take things off, you can put things on, you can bring something forward or you can push it back. So that you have to think about being able to um, cut areas off too. You don't necessarily have to keep everything you know, you, I might decide I only want a sliver of this when I am finished. So this is kind of tying in all the colors. I've got, I mean, I've got the blue, I've got, I've got some burgundy, but I'm not really sure. Maybe I should, I think I will, I think I'm going to remove this piece and put something in its place. I sort of like how this is working. It also helps to tie in some of the blues and purples in that area of emphasis. Now when you cut across something like this, you're, you're breaking that, that line. And we are trying to keep our focus here. So you want things that either point to it or bring you to it or frame it up. Um, so compositionally, even if you don't know anything about composition, you usually know what you like or you usually know if something is looking good. So that's your own personal taste, of course, and, and that's gonna be, you know, that's gonna be super important to you. Now there are a lot of artists who work you know, in collage, and they may or may not work just like this, but I can promise you that testing things out is, is really, really important. Some of the artists that are doing work that is, that is similar to this and that I've been inspired by, um, they are uh, textile artists, and four of the people that I have here are people that you can look up, and one of them is Bisa Butler, she had a big show in Chicago at the Chicago Art Institute that I got to visit. And so I got to see her work um, up close and in person. And she does collage portraits. And she got started um, making a portrait of her grandparents. That was the first thing she did. And she made it out of fabric. And it led her to a whole lot more. It was just her catalyst, her first piece that made that happen. Um, and she was an art educator, so I'm pretty sure she shared a lot of that with her students. Another woman, Susan Carlson, um, and Barbara Shaw, and Mandy Petulo. These are all people that you can check out and see if any of their work is interesting to you. So here's a repetition of pink. 
I might put some of that over here. Now, keeping the background, that's an option, but you could totally completely cover the background too. It's not like you, the background is really just there to hold everything together. But in my case, I'm kind of using that background as a, as a color, as an interest. Now I have some little tiny skinny strips. This helps me think about it. Well, just like if you're drawing a line or painting a line, this is all I am doing is painting with fabric. Now sometimes I have to create a shape um, and then of course you just cut what you need. I am going to cut a rectangle out of this black because I feel like I need some more black. I kind of like the idea of connecting the blacks from this black and white strip. I think I need some more of that too. Sometimes I also like to hide transitions. And what I mean by that is where things are ending, are intersecting, it's, it's sometimes nice to have that end and you don't really know where it ended. You don't have to just necessarily work with what you've got. You can orchestrate a few things like make it happen. So I can take this ink pen and don't worry so much if it's washable, it's not gonna hurt anything. And you just trace around something. You need a specific something like I wanted to put a circle. So I drew a circle here and I can then cut this circle out and place it where I want to. So you aren't dictated by the shape of your piece. Just remember you have complete um, control over that. Just like I was mentioning about Bisa Butler, she did portraits of her grandparents together and of course, you know, she had to cut out a nose. <laughs> so if I want to have something round somewhere, you know, I want to think about maybe, you know, putting something in here that isn't straight, then I have to, I have to cut that. So you can do something like that too. And then what you're left over, you know, you've got leftovers. So you can think about, is this something I want to do? Do I want to mimic a, you know, a curve somewhere else, you might consider, you know, using it as well. And then it looks like it came from that, you know, something to consider, not necessarily to keep, but you can always think about what you've got. Um, some, we haven't really talked about where you get fabric. So I happen to do a lot of sewing, so I'm able to create scraps, but you might be thinking you'd love to do this, but where are you supposed to get all these scraps? You should know that Goodwill or Salvation Army or any place that people donate clothes to, that's an excellent resource. Then there's also just the things that people no longer wear. You know, you, I'm sure, have things at your own home. Ask your parents first. But I'm sure that you have things that you could cut apart and use. Maybe you've got old uniform pants that have a big tear in the leg. You can cut those up. That can be a great base. Um, maybe instead you have someone that you know that also sews and you could ask them for their scraps. It's, it's something that is available to anybody because you can just take apart something you already have or you can, you know, go buy fabric, I suppose. I, I do do that, but I like using up my scraps for something rather than just throwing them out. You know, the idea of recycling and reuse is something that I encourage my students to do. And, and so I put it into play in my own creation like this. You can also think about, um, when I was talking about repetition, 
it's nice to compose like we did with the blue circle. You know, you might actually cut something that you want a repeated element that is, you know, really purposeful. And so you can create something like that for yourself. And you have to be a little bit careful that it doesn't take away from your area of emphasis since your area of em emphasis is supposed to be getting most of the attention. And you've, you've tried to make it that way. But I could let this work as a way to bring your eye to that part if I am careful with my placement. So I'm just cutting these as I talk and I am thinking about them bringing my viewer, because you have to always consider your viewer if you're making this for art. Now that leads me to another thing. You could also use this as what I call whole cloth. Whole cloth, in other words, I'm creating my own piece of fabric. And once I have glued this down and are sewn it, then I could turn it into something else. I could turn it into a little jewelry roll up, or I could turn it into a paintbrush roll up, or I could turn it into a little bag, um, a placemat. It can be anything you want. I do love um, the idea of art being form and function. It doesn't have to be just something that we look at. It might be something that we look at and use. And form and function, I think I'll get rid of this. Form and function um, is kind of the best of both worlds. Why would you want to use something every day that wasn't interesting looking? I, I love the idea of drinking out of a special coffee mug that some potter made or, um, you know, using a, you know, a particular, um, a particular spoon that someone carved for me. You know, that's, to me, that's kind of the ultimate thing is that not only is it beautiful, but I can use it in my life. And so that's what I, um, I like to think of these as, as pieces that could go either way. It could be a piece of artwork or it could be that you are going to turn it into something useful. So some other things that I think you should look for when you are starting to do this is try to stick with one kind of fabric. I use cottons, like 100% cotton. That doesn't mean you can't use other things. It just, if you, all, if you always use cotton, then you always know how to behave. You know that you can iron it. You'll know that you can glue it. You'll know how it, um, how it frays. So if you have that already in mind, you can always check the labels in any kind of garment that you're gonna cut up. Um, you can always, um, it's probably gonna be pre-washed already just because it's something you're, you're taking apart. So you don't have to really worry about that. Um, you need to know that nothing is too small. <laughs> I say that as I lay the teeniest piece of fabric down. Um, remember, you're going to glue this down, and now you're probably freaking out because, wow, that's a lot to glue. You don't have to glue everything. You can also sew some things, but I do think that the glue keeps it all nice and still for a little while until you can, or if you choose, to do any kind of stitching. You can do hand stitching, you can use a sewing machine, whatever you have at your disposal um, to make all of this stay down. So I'm going to go ahead and take another picture and see if I'm happy enough with my composition. All right, so then when you take a look at it, this is the closest you will get to being able to back off. And you can edit it so that you can see, is this something I want to keep? Would I rather it if I cropped off that top part? You know, how is this really looking? You know, am I liking it as a square? What do I want to do? So I feel like this is pulling up your attention to here. This helps to keep you in so you don't keep leaving your eye. When I'm talking about leaving, I mean your eye. You want to keep the viewer's eye on the piece. But I think we're going to go ahead and start doing a little bit of gluing. Now you can use a glue stick. Glue stick's great, especially for keeping it 
you know, just stuck long enough for you to do another process to it. Like, I'm going to probably sew mine. I really like the permanency of sewing. Um, and sometimes I do what's called basting. Basting would just mean that I got a needle and thread and I'm just doing some big giant stitches, just enough to keep everything still until I can sew it. But that's what this glue does. The glue does your basting for you. So you can, I'm gonna tack a few things and then my plan is I will finish this and you'll be able to see it at the end of the video. So I wanna get everything sort of glued down the way I have it. Of course you run the risk of changing your mind, but that's okay too. Like I said, this is the playing part. You can decide at the last minute, you know, I really don't like that there, and I'm going to take it out, or it really needs something right here, and so you'll add something in. And the tacky glue is um, definitely a great thing, but I have to admit, this stick glue is going to serve the purpose a little quicker. It's going to do a better job quickly. So I think this is a good method. And if things change a little bit, remember, you've got a, I've got a photograph. So if you take photographs and you do them, you take them often, then, I mean, you'll have that as a reference. But usually, if something changes, it doesn't mean that it was a bad thing. It just means that it changed. Okay, so in in town right now, in Lafayette, Louisiana, um, there is an exhibit going on with an artist named Sean Major. And she does some really amazing collage quilting that incorporates a lot of 3D things. And you can go and actually see her work at our um, our museum here, the Hilliard, and see up close and in person some of her work, and it's very big, which is exciting too. Now, I um, when I went to Chicago about three years ago, and I took a workshop and I had a wonderful time, but it was very process oriented and it was all about creating a collage um, and a piece actually of whatever you wanted to do. It wasn't necessarily a collage, it was a collage for me. And we took pictures uh, out in the city and then we were inspired by what we did and I was inspired by the train. I don't have uh, any way to commute here and in a big city like that, you get to commute, you get to ride a train, and a train is um, is pretty amazing. And my son, the train that would go to his home was the red line. And so I concentrated my efforts because I now thought that the train was my link to him. It was a home away from home. And so by working in paper first, I was able to plan out my idea and that's a wonderful way to begin a collage is to to plan out an idea on paper before you start working in the fabric um, it's just another way to do things if you needed something to have a bit more planning kind of like Bisa Butler would do if she were working on someone's portrait so she would make a plan and then she would cut her pieces to fit that plan so that is how I got started with fabric collage mostly. And you'll see in the image that um, it of course changed. My idea evolved and that's what ideas do. And so the paper one and the fabric piece that I ended up with were different because it evolved. So you have to know it's okay if things don't, um, I mean, it, it has to be okay with you, but it, as an artist, you're not necessarily going to stick to exactly what you first thought up. There's no rule to that. You don't have to, um, oh, you're not allowed to change your mind. Well, of course you are going to change your mind. 
you're going to change your mind. That's one thing you can be certain about. And sometimes your materials will change your mind for you. <laughs> so sometimes things aren't accessible and you have to make a decision or a choice to do something else. So once you have pieces glued down enough to be able to lift, like these little guys, I'm going to probably put on last just because they're so tiny. But see, now I can move this. I have the ability to at least, like, I could probably lay a piece of paper over it to transfer it to wherever I needed to go. I could even try to, like, fold it or um, to be able to move it because I would be bringing it to my sewing machine. For you or anyone who was choosing to work just with glue, well then you would just do a little bit more of what I've been doing. You would do it until you were satisfied that everything was laying down and wasn't going to move. So at this point, for the most part, this piece would be complete at least in idea and initial, um, initial composition. I can always come in and add a little bit more later. So I want you to think about looking at things differently. Where you find things. It could be from an old shirt that was gonna get thrown out. It might be the, the mesh bag that the avocados came in that your mom brought home from the store. It could be anything. Start looking at things differently. Start collecting your own little stash that you can work from. And think big pieces, think little pieces, nothing's too small. And Thanks for creating with us today and be sure to come back next week for a new virtual art studio and bye, have fun.